cascade more than three batter modules. Extra accessories are required if you have over three batteries connected to one power module. Pause the screen to review. If you plan to install on the ground, buy an additional bracket set and battery base. Decide whether you'll install X1 on the ground or wall. We'll show wall installation now. Before installing, find a suitable location. Take note of the clearance space needed to keep X1 away from nearby objects. If you need to install more than two power module, make sure the distance between the two set of modules is above 30 keen. Find the bracket studs and secure screws inside them. You have three options for screw hole spacing, 12 inches, 16 inches, or 20 inches. Mark an appropriate height to install the wall bracket. Put the base plate on the left and right brackets and secure with the M4 10 mm screws. Use a level to position the bracket back plate on the wall. Mark the holes. Use M8 70 mm screws to mount the brackets on the wall. Confirm the bracket is level. Align the positioning card with the top of the base. Make sure it adheres to both the wall and mount bracket. Align the positioning card's bottom holes with the marked points on the wall. Mark the holes for the second or third mount brackets. Continue marking all necessary holes before mounting the bracket on the wall. When you're ready to mount the brackets, you'll see there are three options for screw hole spacing. These are also 12 inches, 16 inches, or 20 inches. Align the marked holes with the appropriate slots on the mount bracket. Make sure the 30 millimeter side faces the bottom. Confirm the mount bracket is level. If not, adjust. Repeat these steps to install all of the wall mount brackets. Install the first battery onto the bracket. Secure it with the interlockers, aligning the battery with the base plate. Stack and lock the remaining batteries and power modules, then make sure they're aligned. Insert shims between the anti-tip bracket and the hook to prevent any wobbling. After installing, check one more time that all modules are algae and are secured on the brackets. To install the backup controller, press down on the latch to open the door. Lift and remove the door. Unfasten the PM4 10mm screws to detach the inner panel. Keep the screws to reinstall. Remove the necessary cable knockouts on the bottom of the backup controller. You'll need to do this before installing the backup controller on the wall. Find an appropriate place to install the backup controller. Use a 16-inch screw hole distance and check that the backup controller is level. Use four self-tapping screws to secure the backup controller to the wall. Clean up any residual dust, then check that the backup controller is secure. Now, you can begin wiring. Remove the dustproof plugs from all module BMS and power ports. Attach the included cable ties to the modules. You'll need to do this before continuing the installation. Route the positive DC power cables through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's positive power ports. Route the negative DC power cables through the cable ties and insert the cables into the module's negative power ports. Route the RJ45 signal cables through the cable ties. Loosen the locking caps, insert the cables into the BMS ports, and finally rotate the locking caps to secure them. Route the ground cables through the cable ties. Secure the cables with screws. Just a reminder, the PE and RJ45 cables are secured with the same cable tie. Each DC power cable has its own cable tie. Cut off any cable tie excess. Repeat these steps to wire each module. For the rest of the wiring, here are the cables and tools you'll need. Pause the video if you need to review. Next, strip the power cable's insulation layer and route them through a flexible steel conduit. Attach the MC4 connector to the power cables. Take a moment to prepare the tools needed for adjusting signal cables. To begin, attach the waterproof cover to the signal cable. Strip the insulation layer from both ends of the signal cable. Insert the wires into the ERJ45 connectors in EIA-T IA568B order. 
Crimp the RJ45 connectors and make sure the pins click in place. Route the signal cable through the flexible steel conduit. Strip the insulation layer of a ground cable and insert heat shrink tubing and a ring terminal inside. Crimp the ring terminal onto the ground cable. Wrap the wire crimping area with the heat shrink tubing, then use a heat gun to seal. Connect all cables to the batteries. Use M4 10mm screws to install the bracket side cover. Install an RJ45 connector with two 120 ohm resistors and the female and male dust caps. You're ready to connect the power module to the backup controller. You'll need an L1 cable, L2 cable, neutral cable, ground cable, and a signal cable. Make sure the signal cable is the appropriate length. First, remove the wiring compartment cover from the right side of the power module. Rotate the inner rings to remove the stoppers from the compartment cover. Attach conduit fittings to the compartment cover's inlets. Take a moment to prepare the AC power cables. Strip 18 millimeters of insulation. Connect the ground, neutral, L1 and L2 cables to the power module. Connect the signal cable to the PCSCOM1 port. Put the compartment cover back on. Place a breaker on the rail labeled Power Module 1 and secure the breaker with screws. Note that your breaker location may differ depending on your location and needs. Connect the L1 and L2 cables to the breaker for Power Module 1. Install the neutral and ground cables to their respective wiring bars. Plug the ERJ45 connector into the COMPCS port in the wiring compartment. PV wirings. Backup loads wiring. Non-backup loads wiring. Our next step in the installation depends on how you use your backup controller. If it's the main service entrance, follow these steps. Install the neutral ground bonding jumper to the backup controller. Make sure to remove the jumper from the panel downstream. Mount a main breaker onto the backup controller. Secure the main breaker with one M4 screw and two hex nuts. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. Make sure the ground cable is connected to a ground anchor. And then, mount the wire sleeve terminals on the ends of the CT's cables and install the terminal block. Orient the arrow on the current transformers toward the cable entry. Plug the terminal block connector into the socket labeled Grid CT. If your backup controller isn't your main service entrance, the main breaker is inside of the main panel. We need connect the backup controller to the main panel first and then go through the power meter to the grid. Connect the L1, L2, neutral, and ground cables respectively. In this instance, the ground cable doesn't require a ground neutral bonding strap. Now, it's time for you to connect your system to the internet. You can connect via ethernet, Wi-Fi, or a mobile dongle. If you'd like to use 4G data, you can purchase a mobile dongle to do so. To plug in the mobile dongle, take off the backup controller cover and look for a port on top. Remove the breaker plates as needed and reinstall the inner panel to the backup controller. Use the seven included black screws to secure it. Reinstall the backup controller door.
install the battery side covers, starting with the bottom and moving up. Align the side cover clips with the grooves at the bottom of the battery. Push the side covers down to click into place. Install the side covers to the power module. Align the side cover clips with the power module groves. Push the covers down to click into place. Fasten the black M4 10mm screws on top. Attach the rubber separator to the right side cover slot. Finally, take off the screen protection film. Your installation of Anchor Solix X1 is now complete. Anchor Solix. Live in power.